morning, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we are pretty much wrapping up our um, lessons on compositional layout. So today, our objective is to build out an application, not a full application, but some sort of application that queries a web API and displays images, right? So far, we've been using um, labels with just text or some number, some integer. But today, we will take it a step further. We'll use combined framework um, as, uh, as well as compositional layout to build out an, a photo search application. The photo search application at the end of the lesson will look very similar to what we have here illustrated with a search bar, which we'll be using UI search controller for. And we'll have two groups here in a nested group of our images that we search for. Along the way, we'll come across different combined APIs um, to help us complete this application. One of the um, combined APIs we'll take a look at is, as the user is typing, we don't want to query the API for each character that the user types into the search box. So we'll probably add some sort of wait period. We'll use the debounce operator from combine to give it a delay so that the user, after the user finished types in for example, COSML, it will delay, debounce, and then it will query the API. It won't search for C and O and Z. It will just search for, I type in COSML, I stop typing, now carry out the search. So we'll also take a look at how that particular operator works on Combine. But to start off, this is the layout that we'll be going for. And again, we're talking about compositional layout. The Layout will be such that we have the blue border here represents the nested or the outermost group. Within that nested group, we have two groups laid out vertically. The items are laid out vertically. So we have a leading group on the left and we have a trailing group on the right. The leading group will have two items and the trailing group will have three items. The nested group width will be the fractional width. Again, this fractional width here represents the container's width, in that case, the section width. Since the section is taking up the entire device width, this will be the width of the group. In other words, the blue from left to right, that blue um, group, this is gonna be the width of it. It's gonna be 1.0, 100% of the container. The nested group's height here will use an absolute value of a hundred point, or oh sorry, of a thousand points for the height of the group, right? So the height of the group will be such that it's a thousand points, always a thousand points. And that's how we'll be laying out the nested group. And within it, the nested um, leading and trailing groups will just take up the entire height of the parent. And the width of the yellow groups here will be half the width of the container. So this is the layout we'll be dealing with. First, our objective is to um, set up our collection view, set up our, our layout, then we'll go create the API client and all that stuff and get the data into the application. Objectives, use all we've learned so far to build a photo search application using a custom compositional layout. Second, we'll be using the combined framework to make our asynchronous network request, right? So far in curriculum, we've been using closures um, to do our asynchronous network request. So um, we're getting close to that point where we want to see some more advanced topics. So Combine is one of those topics where it got introduced last year at WWDC iOS 13. So it enables us to have even more flexible asynchronous network um, work done. Along the way, we'll come across a publisher. Our API client will be a publisher. That function we write, it will be a publisher. And in our view controller, we'll subscribe. So that's how Combine works. There's a publisher giving values, and there's a subscriber receiving the values. So at the end of the day, this is all we need to know for Combine with our introduction to networking um, uh, calls here. You have a publisher, which is the API client. The subscriber is the view controller getting the values from the API client. So I make a request, I make a search, from my, from my Pixabay account, I search for burrito. 
I get back the results in the view controller via subscribing to that publisher. We'll see what that looks like in code. We we'll also take a look at the UI search controller in our app here. We're using the UI search controller. It's, it gets embedded in the navigation item of our nav bar. So we'll actually embed our view controller in a navigation controller. So we have a nav bar. And in that nav bar, the navigation item will add the search controller to the navigation item. The navigation item has a property on it called search controller. So we'll set that search controller to our defined search controller. As I mentioned earlier, we'll also take a look at the bounce so that the user is not querying for every character that they type into the search field. We have some starter files that we'll use. So keep close to the lesson link so that you could grab those um, starter files as we build out our app. The image cell is just going to be some cell with an image view. That's all we have. We have a config.swift. Highly recommended to push all, all your work to GitHub. So if you're pushing your work to GitHub, this is going to be a public GitHub repo, most probably, that you want to show your employer. So you definitely want to hide your API key. So you would hide this config file in your getignore. So this you can just use as a template for your config file there. Next, we'll have a photo model. We'll probably do that from scratch, which, which probably should, because some of us are probably rusty here, building out models. And third, we'll start looking at the combined APIs we'll be using. One of the APIs we'll be using is this at published um, property wrapper. It's called a property wrapper. Anytime you see one of those at symbols here, um, those are called property wrappers in, combined, um, in the combined world. So this property wrapper enables us to have any of our properties be a publisher. So the one property we'll make a publisher is a string that we'll call search text. So anytime the user adds something to the search bar, it gets assigned to the search text. The search text is a publisher, and now we could subscribe to that publisher. We'll see how all that works and comes together. We'll use the URL session wrapper um, publisher that Combine provides to us called Data Task Publisher, which takes a URL, and that will um, map to it and will return that publisher to the view controller. We'll also take a look at the bounce. We'll debounce on the text field, not the text field, sorry, on the search text so the user, again, is not sending every character to the API. We'll take a look at UI search controller. We spoke about that. Um, and that's it. That's the overview, basically. And that'll take us into creating our application. And feel free to follow along the lesson as we actually go ahead and um, build out the project. Any questions before we get started? OK, cool. So let's go build out our app. Let me get Xcode going. And again, we're using Pixabay, so make sure your Pixabay account is ready to go. Let's give this, I'm not creating the playgrounds. That's all. So new project, single view application. Let's call this project compositional layout combine. That's going to be easy to know what we dealt with in this particular project, as opposed to calling it photo search or something like that. Just call it compositional layout combine, or you could call it compositional layout with combine. Um, that's OK. Compositional layout combine. Click Next. Save this to my desktop. Create. OK, so there we are in our new project. First off, let's go to our view controller. We'll do everything programmatically. So now it's like 50-50. The first 50% of lecture last week we did was storyboards with collection views, um, setting that up. Uh, yesterday we did programmatic, today we'll also do programmatic. So now we have both ways of setting up our collection views. 
So let's go ahead and start setting that up. Actually, let's first refactor the view controller name here. So refactor your view controller's name. Can I make it bigger, please? Yes, bigger. Thank you. Okay, so you're oh. very welcome. So refactor the view controller. Let's just call it folder search. Controller. Photo search view controller. Alex, yes. I've never seen this error. It, it's not uh, like Xcode, it's not letting me to refactor. Close Xcode and reopen. Mm, okay. Okay, so we have our photo search. Let us know how it works out. Uh, we have our photo search view controller. We'll add our collection view. By collection view. Okay. We'll navigate over to the app delegate because we want to embed this in a nav controller. So navigate, not, not app delegates, all right. This is iOS 12. I'm talking about iOS 13. Let's go to the sim delegate. Sim delegate, navigate to our application. Again, not app delegate, sorry. Uh, back in my sim delegate, let's navigate over to connection options here, function, and let's go ahead and implement our setup code for programmatic views. So here we have our scene. Let's get our window scene. Let's set up our window or initialize our window with a frame. Here we'll give it the entire frame of the of the device so we'll say ui screen dot main dot bounce take up the entire space available to us next we'll say window dot root view controller equal to ui navigation controller we want to embed it in a navigation controller so ui navigation controller root view controller go ahead and add our photo search controller to it Next, we will go ahead and set up the Windows scene here. And lastly, we will present the window. Window.make visible. Build, make sure you have no warnings, no errors. Okay. Navigate back to our folder search view controller. Let's just give our navigation bar item a title. So we'll say navigation item dot title equal to photo search is fine. And now let's run our app and make sure this shows up as intended. Okay. I'm missing a color here. Photo search shows up, but my background color, view that background color system background. Okay, cool. This is good. Uh, so we are good to go. We have our navigation controller. We've embedded our view controller in a navigation controller. We set the title to photo search, and now let's continue to build out our collection view logic. We'll need a data source, but before we set up the data source, let's set up our enum. The enum will capture the sections for our collection view. So here we have our enum. It's gonna have a raw value of an integer, and we'll make it case iterable like we've always been doing. Here we'll only have one section, so some of that might not necessarily be needed. But for now, just keep this as a boilerplate setup. And we have one. Yes. Alex, I just I was just curious. What are like the best practices as far as like where we should put that enum? That enum like, should it be in the class. You could put or? it outside of the class, but since it's so tightly 
um, so, since it's so tied to the collection view, it's okay to have it here. But if it grows bigger than what we have now or yesterday, I would remove it. Like yesterday, if you see the finished code, I actually removed it and I put it, I think I did remove it um, and put it in its own file. Okay. But if it's like very right. small like this, like a couple lines of code, that's fine. But if it starts to get bigger, I would take it out and put it in its own file. Okay, great. That's, Thank you. that's probably the rule of thumb. I'd probably use that. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, very good. Uh, okay, so we have our section kind. Now let's go build up our data source. So private bar. Before we do that, let's do type alias. Type alias just to capture the data source. So we're not, again, we type in too much than we need. So UI collection view, diffable data source. And the types are, for now, Section kind is the section type identifier. And our item identifier is going to be our custom model, which we haven't done yet for collection compositional layout. But for now, let's just make it an int. We'll come back and we'll refactor that int to a photo, which we don't have yet, but that's OK. For now, just keep it as an int. And let's go build the data source here. So data source of type data source like that. Again, build and make sure you have no errors, warnings as we keep building. Before we do our collection view setup, let's do our layout. So private function create layout. Our layout returns a layout. So let's go ahead and return that collection view layout and again what do we need we need an item we need some sort of group we need a section and we need a layout okay for our purposes we don't need exactly a section provider but I'll still use it uh, we could since we have just one section we don't have multiple sections coming in, but either way, I'll just do a layout using the section provider. So if we do have to add multiple sections later, we could use that. Or if we want the layout environment, we also have access to that. So let's go ahead and use UI Compositional Layout Collection View Compositional Layout Section Provider. Okay, section provider here takes two arguments. First argument is the section index. We'll just call it section index. And the second is the layout environment. Great. So here we have our layout. We could return our layout here. And this is good. Take those uh, items. Okay. Yep, yep. I, I missed again. How did you? Is this autofill or it's? Uh, Which one? The, uh, this one? Yeah, what's inside? Okay. The so, what you do, you type in UI collection view compositional layout, you put your uh -huh. open parents and you select section provider. I think there's like four initializers. Uh, okay, there are two section providers. The one that doesn't have configuration. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then the, the, yep. I got it. Very good, very good. Uh, cool. oh, excellent. So again, um, the layout environment, I'll probably put out like a small video just to show what that looks like. But basically, if you have in portrait, you have four items, you rotate it, you still have four items, and you have more space. Instead of just having those four items get bigger, you could say, if it's wider, give it more items. So that layout environment gives you the size as you rotate the phone, this gets called with the new sizes, and then you could use that size to determine how many items you want to return. So back in our layout, let's see what it looks like. Um, here we have our items, which we'll just start off by saying, take the full width and the full height like we did yesterday, and then we'll build out the leading group, we'll build out the trailing group, we'll put both those groups inside of a nested group, add that to a section and return the layout, okay? 
So this is what we're going to be doing. First we'll build is the red boxes, which is the items. Then we'll build the yellow boxes, which is the leading and trading groups. And then we'll build the blue box, which is the nested group. And then we'll return the section. Okay. So the leading item here, we'll say it needs an item size. And we'll use NS collection. Was there a question? We'll use NS collection layout size. The width dimension is one point. Well, <laughs> the width dimension is using fractional width. Um, again, we have three types here. We have fractional or four types, if you want to call it that. Fractional height, fractional width, absolute, and estimated. We'll be using fractional width. We'll say take up the entire width of your container. Next, we'll go to the height dimension. We'll say fractional height. We'll say take up the entire height of your container. Okay. And then we'll go out and create the item. The item is NS collection item. Item needs a size. We'll pass in item size. We'll come back and add the insets later. I always like to add the insets later after we have everything set up. Um, okay, so this is the item. Let's go to the groups. For the groups, we have leading group. We have trailing group. And we have a nested group, which holds those two groups together. So the leading group, let's see, let's just create a inner group size because both those will need sizes. So inner group size. Inner group size will be half the width. If you're looking at the lesson, actually, no, let's go to it. The inner group size is the yellow boxes. We'll say half the width of the container and take the full height of the container. So the inner group size, NS, Collection layout size, the width, fractional width, we said 50% of the container, and the height, we say fractional height, 100% of the container. So that's the inner group size. Both leading and trading will have the same sizes. So let's now continue on. So leading group. NS collection layout group. How are we aligning those groups? Vertical. Vertical, very good. They stack one on top of the other, we'll add them vertically. Let's continue on. So vertical, and we're using the initializer that takes in account of items, right? So the second initializer. For the layout size, we pass in inner group size. For the item, we pass in item. For the count, we pass in, ah, we still have to use this here because we have two or three. Okay, good. Um, here we have two or three. Everybody sees that? Actually, it doesn't yeah. really matter. It doesn't matter, actually. Uh, we don't have two or three because we're setting them up individually, so that's okay. So for the leading group, we'll have two items, and for the trading group, we'll have three items, correct? Yes? Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. So this is what we have. We're not going to copy and paste. I'm very tempted to do so. Uh, we'll create a trailing group, NS collection group, also vertical, also takes an account, same size, and the item is the same, and the count is different. Yes, we could create an enum. Yes, we could do a tinary operator. We could do a lot of things. But this is what we have here. We have leading group, trailing group. So we have our two groups to go. Next, we will need to create the nested group. The nested group has a size. So we'll say nested group size and NS size here. So for the size of the nested group, which is the blue, the blue border here is the nested group now, the parent, if you want to call it that. 
uh, the width of it will be fractional width. We'll take up 100% of the container. And the height, the height will use an absolute value for the height. We'll say 1,000 points. Okay? So this is our nested group size. Now we could go ahead and create our nested group. Our nested group is a group. And here we'll actually lay out horizontally with the items array. Pass in the nested group size and the sub items will be an array of items. So the array of items I'm passing in is trailing, group, and leading, ah, sorry. Uh, leading group and trailing group. Build, make sure we have no errors. We have our nested group now, so we could add our section. So section now is NS section. Can I just do that? Nope. And no, sorry, the order that you um, put it in matters. You have to put like leading first. Then yeah, that would be the order it gets placed. Okay. Yep. And then here we have our nested group. For now, yeah, it would matter. Because they're not identical because one has two, one has three. Uh, so we have our section. And lastly, we just have to return the section. Whoa. So let me put all that on screen so we have the full thing almost have the full thing here and i'll give us a few minutes to type that out any questions feel free to ask while we're here we could as well just add the item insets so let always get in the use of creating a constant for your insets because again it's very easy to play with the numbers again and it's better to play with the number one place as opposed to four places so here we'll create item space and constant of type cg float we'll start off with five points and we'll say item content insets equal to ns directional edge insets right an NS directional edge insets takes four arguments, a top spacing or inset, which we just pass in item spacing, a leading, we pass in item spacing, a bottom, we pass in item spacing, and a trailing, we pass in item spacing, and we build. Any questions about any of our layout logic so far? Okay, so let's. Go ahead. Go ahead and run your app and let's see what we have. Well, we have nothing. We're too hasty. Um, <laughs> that would be nice. But we have no collection view set up yet. Uh, okay, so let's set that up. Wait, What's that? Alex, my um my computer had restarted. Can you just go to the to that part real quick so I can like this part right here? Yeah. Okay. And then yep. can... All the right. fellows. Other fellows, feel free to configure your collection view, right? Get, get, get some practice going. So set up your collection view and get your layout because here we're trying to run the app and we have no configure collection view. <laughs> um, so set you can that up. from there if you need to. I, I got it. Thank All you. Right. Actually, we have a bunch of other things to do. I guess we're just trying to run here. Or I'm trying to run. Uh, view did load. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our collection view or configure our collection view. So, Private function configure collection view. We configure our collection view programmatically. So we'll say collection view. Again, collection view right now is nil. UI collection view initializer. We have three initializers here, or four. We'll take the one that takes in a frame and a collection view layout. The frame we're passing in is the views bounds and the layout we'll get from our function create layout so this function here returns a layout we get the layout right here we use it for the collection view next our collection view oh yes we need a cell 
Uh, so register, we need to register a cell. So we'll register the image cell, which we don't have yet. And the reuse identifier will be image cell dot reuse identifier. Okay, comment that out for now. That's not gonna work. That's gonna give us errors. And let's go get a cell. So we'll create a file called image cell that subclasses from UI collection view cell and we'll add in the cell from the lecture notes. So let's go ahead and do so. So we're creating a new file. It's a Cocoa Touch class, subclass of UI collection view cell. And the class name is image cell. Create and navigate over to the lecture notes where it says start of files, number two. Just grab the image cell here. Copy that. Only things we're copying. And just replace it. Okay. And build. Make sure you have no errors. Again, very similar to what we had yesterday. We have our reuse identifier constant called image cell. So now we're not doing this multiple places. We have an image view with a default photo. Feel free to change that default photo to whatever system SF symbol you want. We have a default corner radius of eight. We have clip to bounce, all the good stuff here, which we could always override those values in our view controller. And we set up the constraints for that image view. It just takes up the top, it's constrained to the top, constrained to the lead-in, constrained to the bottom constraint to the trailing. So it just takes up the entire space of the cell. So that's our image cell. While we're here, is there anything else we need for now? Uh, I think image cell, okay, that's, that's all for now. I think we'll actually build the photo from scratch to get, to get us again reviewing that. So go back to your view controller. On comment line 30, if you type that out, build it. Okay, mine has no errors, so that's good. The layout at the end, right? I'm, I'm probably just being really slow right now. The layout, the what, layout. Part you, what part you missed? The very end of this. Um, uh, here. Yeah. Cool, you got it? Sorry, yes. Okay, cool, excellent. All right, so back to our configure collection view. We've initialized the collection view. We've registered the cell for the collection view. Let's give our collection view a background color. Any background color of your choosing. And let's set up the layout for the collection view or rather auto layout for the collection view. Here we'll say auto resize and mask. Take the entire width, flexible width here and flexible height. And lastly, we need to make sure that we add the collection view to the views sub view. And this view here is a property on the view controller. This is the view of the view controller. We need to add the collection view to its sub view. Good. Uh, good. I could remove this line and just call my configure collection view. So we've configured the collection view, great, but there's no data yet. So it's just gonna be empty if we run the app. So let's go ahead and configure the data source. We have, make sure we have our data source instance here. And this is still an int, which is fine for now. Um, and let's go on to configure the data source. So private function, configure data source. Our data source instance is nil. We need to initialize it. We'll say data source initializer that takes in a collection view. We pass in our collection view. Our cell provider has three arguments, the collection view, 
index path, which has the section and row, and the actual item, which we'll just call int here for now. Okay. Now, inside of that closure, we need to return a cell. Right here, we need to return a cell. So let's go ahead and get a cell. So we'll say God let cell equal to collection view dot BQ, reusable cell, not a supplementary header. And the reuse identifier will say it's an image cell dot reuse identifier, reuse identifier, and pass in the index path. And since we, using a guard statement, it expects an optional, so make sure to typecast to the type you expect, which is an image cell. And if we get to the else statement, we have an error. We could not be queued an email cell. Build, make sure you have, make sure you fix those errors and warnings. <laughs> um, we need to return a cell first of all. So that error goes away and the warning goes away as well. Great. So since our background color for the collection view for now is system background, we could just change the cells background color so we could actually see cells showing up. So here we'll say a system, let me go for a different color for now. Okay, cool. That's all we have for now. We're not gonna set up any image or actually it has a default image photo, which is okay. We'll just see all the photos everywhere, that's fine. Um, let's continue. Let's set up the data source or the snapshot rather. So set up initial snapshot. This was initializing data source. Let's figure in itself. So set up initial snapshot. What does that look like? We have a snapshot on our data source. So this gets us the current snapshot. Always gets us the current snapshot. Now we'll apply the snapshot with whatever changes we do. Animating differences falls here. And since our data type for now is an integer, we'll just go ahead and add, append the sections, which is just one section for now. And we'll add some data into our array. So here we'll say append items. It expects an identifiers of integers. We'll just pass in an array of integers from one, including 100. We'll build. And this is our snapshot that will just get us some items in our cells. So we make sure the cell is working and that's what we have. I'll pause here for a few seconds here. So everybody's typing and questions as well. Feel free to ask them. At this point, we've seen that pattern a bunch using collection views and table views. So we should be pretty comfortable with um, default data sources Alex? Yes. Uh, I was, my computer was off for a few okay. minutes. Can you just send me this code? Like, the view controller? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else wants the view controller? Why am I looking at the pages? Anybody else wants the view controller? Okay, so I'll send it to you personally. You have the image cell, correct, Luba? Yeah, I just did it. Okay, cool. So, good. How are we doing? Are we still typing? Alex, I do have a question, right? So I ran it, and um, it, it, it looks good. Like, it's rendering the same way that it looks inside of the project, like the okay. demo. It just doesn't have the images, obviously. But okay. Like if you put two in the front and then three in the back, how, cause it's not really just two and three in the back. 
because you have like one to one hundred, and if you keep on scrolling, I'm sure out there are hundred. Let me run the app so we're all on the same page, Chris. Okay. Um. I just, how does it know? Because it's not like it's cutting one off. One second. Actually, I haven't called my configure. So give us a second. You're slightly ahead of us for now. One second. So in our view did load, let's call configure data source and then run the app. Okay, so here we are. We have our cells rendered very similar to what we needed. Um, the content mode, we could change that later, that's fine. But here we have two items in the front and we have three items on, well, two items leading, three items trailing, right? Um, Tiffany, question. Yes, how does it, all right, so I know that we say that we want the leading to have two and the trailing to have three, but is that just gonna be on the screen at a time? Is that what that means? Uh, what that means is if I have five items, this is how it's gonna lay it out. If I have four items, the, the fifth item at the bottom is not gonna show. That's a good question. Let's actually bring up five items here or four items, actually. One, two, three, four. If we have four items, we're not gonna have an item over here. So the way it lays it out, it's one, two, top first, bottom, top right, middle, and then it just keeps going that way. And I totally, if, it's just the idea, like, if I put 100 there, it's not just showing two on one side, three on the other side, it's, it keeps- oh yeah, it's, it keeps scrolling vertically. Right. I just, I don't know. I mean, you probably don't have an answer for me. It just is what it is. This is just, <laughs> just the technology. Is it that you're blown away or? <laughs> What's that? Oh, well, yeah, because I don't know. I just, I don't, never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it that you're just blown away by the, the ease of this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is good. Hey, Alex. Um, yes. The when we have four items like this and it leaves the fifth bottom right item off, like we're seeing here, mm -hmm. uh, is that because of the, the order of the sub items within the nested group? Yes, okay. So, if we were to flip those, the leading group and the trailing group right there within that array, yep. would it re would it render the bottom left image out or similar? It would do three and would do the top. The top second, not the sec, not the fifth. Oh, one. it would flip them. Okay. Yep. I exactly. Get. Exactly. Oh, right. that makes sense. That makes so much sense. We do have nested groups, and we gave them sizes like this width, this. Bro, that's why. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'll keep you on that cloud nine for a second. Um, <laughs> any questions? Uh, uh, I have a yep. question. At yep. what point did we add the insets for the pictures? Um. Uh, we added the insets for the items here I'm on line 42 and 43. Okay, one, two. It might be different lines for you, but after the item, after let item. All right, I got it. Thank uh -huh. you. Very good, very good. Okay, cool. So let us continue on. We have, let me put that, actually that doesn't really matter. So everybody at this point have their cells rendered correctly? I don't know. Mine is not working. Did you call in view did load this guy? Configure data source. I'm trying to see. Ah, no. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, also, one more question. Yep. With the app, with the absolute, um, is it like proportional to the device you're using? Like, why do why are we? No, using it's absolute? just it's just points. Like, I just wanted it to look longer. Okay, so if it's a giant iPad, it's still gonna be like that. Uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a hard coded a thousand points. Okay, got it. Regardless of the device. Thank you. Very good questions. Uh, is, if you were to put estimate and you put a thousand, then what would based, you based on the content size, it would try to grow the content. Gotcha. Yep, very good. All right, I think we are moving along smoothly here. We are. In a good place. Okay, so the next step here, let's add in our search controller, and then we will go ahead and start working with our API. So first, let's go create our search controller. Let's go to the very top of our class, not the very top, but after our data source method here. 
let's put some comments here. So uh, declare data source declare collection view. And now we will declare search controller. Okay, our search controller is a search controller of type UI search controller, UI search controller. Okay. This search controller will enable us to embed a search bar in our navigation item. So here we declared a search controller. We will now configure the search controller within a function here. Configure search controller. And what does that look like? Well, search controller needs to be initialized. So we use our UI search controller initializer. There's initializers here. There's four initializers. We'll use the initializer that says search results controller expects an optional UI view controller. This search controller, you could give it a different view controller outside of the view controller it's defined in. You could give it a results controller, call it that. Um, and that results controller will populate its table view or collection view with the results of the search. Or you could simply pass in nil if you're using the same controller here. In our case, we'll be using the same um, controller or no controller at all with no results. That's okay. But here we have our search controller. Next, we'll say navigation item. We said we'll embed this search controller in the navigation item. The navigation item has a search controller property. And that search control controller property, right? If I do search controller, it's uh, optional because it could have or not have a value. So that value will now assign it to the search controller we just created, like that. Okay. And lastly, don't forget to call configure search controller here. Before we do any more configurations, let's just make sure the search controller or the search bar does appear. Run your app. And if you scroll down, you should now see a search bar here. And you could type into it. You could cancel it. Right? Do we all now have a search bar? I do. OK, cool. Very good. I'm always looking out for the verbal acknowledgment because I can't see the the uh, zoom the zoom faces right now i do oh. not can we can you move the simulator please yep thank you sure. Very true. so we configured it we have our search controller and we set it in the navigation item like that you got to scroll down too because yeah you have to yeah so, yeah sorry you have to scroll down to see it uh, alex yes can i look at the configured data source because it's mine is crashing there Okay, uh, you probably forgot to add a section. Let's see. One second, I'll come back up, everybody. Uh, configure data source here. So make sure you add the section. Snapshot data plan section. I have ah data pen item. I I think I have that. Double check. I mean. Hmm. So define the snapshot, append the sections. We only have one section. Add the items array here in that case and apply the snapshot and set it to false. Mm -hmm. It says uh, an it's found nil while in unwrapping optional value at the line 76. Line 76 here. Mm -hmm. You have your data source. Your data source here is a collection view provider. You have your collection view, you have the index path, correct? Mm -hmm. um, you call configure data source in your VD load? Yes, you did because that's why it crashed. Uh, go ahead and share your screen. Let me take a look at it. 
One second. Let me stop sharing. Uh, one second. Where is it? Okay. So, yeah, it's crashing here. Do you see it? One second. Did you configure the data set? Uh, let's see, data source collection view. The collection view did the collection view might be nil. Go up. Did you call configure collection view? Go up to video load. Yeah, you called it in the reverse order. So you're trying to configure your data source, but your collection view hasn't been configured yet. Mm. So that's important there. Okay. Yep. Okay, so stop sharing. Okay, you can stop sharing. Okay, thank you. All right, very good. But it, it, there is no search bar. Uh, you need to call the search bar and configure it like we have on screen. Um, so you need to configure the search controller and you need to add those two lines here in the function configure search controller. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, cool. So everybody sees their search bar. Some folks are still working on that. That's okay. Now let's co let's keep configuring our search controller. So search controller has a protocol on it called search results updater, which we need to conform to. Set ourselves to it. Think of this like the delegate for the search controller, right? So I'll just put delegate here. Other things we could do, we could say allow the user search bar, allow the, don't add auto correction or not auto correction, don't add auto capitalization. I'll say none here. What that means is if I add a P, just keep it lowercase, don't make it uppercase P. And there's a bunch of other things you could add. This is just a glimpse at um, introduction to like search controller, but there's a lot of other things you could do. And Lastly, we'll say search controller obscures, where is it? Obscures background during presentation, right? So indicating whether the underlying content is obscured during search. We don't want to allow that, so we'll add that false. All right, so we still want to be able to scroll as the user is searching. We want to be able to scroll the underlying content. So that's all we have. The last thing we need to do is basically conform to the search results updater, which we'll do now. So add those five lines of code in the configure search controller, and we'll go write an extension on the photo search controller and add the one required function for this protocol. Okay. So let's scroll down to the very bottom. We'll create an extension here, extension on our photo search controller that conforms to UI search results, what's it called? UI search updater, UI search results updating, and we'll implement the one method called update. What's it, update search results, this. So this gets called every time the user types into the search field, build. Just put a print statement. Let's see what's happening here. And then just put in search results dot search bar dot text. So as we type in, we'll just see console logs. So this is gonna confirm, this is gonna confirm that we have, this is gonna confirm that we are able to type into the search bar and get results. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, give us a few seconds to type up here and we'll test it out. Alex, can I see um, the computer? Uh, for the search controller? For a second. What's that? Yeah, just for like the configuration for the search controller. I just really okay. 
I'll be right back here. Search controller. This guy. Auto capital. Oh, okay. You would have gotten an error here unless you confirm like we just did. No, I, I was getting. Oh, this guy. Yeah. Thank okay. You. You could also do autocorrect, right? Because maybe we don't want the search to autocorrect whether he says type in. So there's many other things you could add. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have that. And don't forget to add what well, you have to add. I think I just messed up my code somewhere. What did I do here? Don't forget to add this extension here. Okay, so let's test this out. Run the app. And Let's just search for something. I'll put Paris. I'll delete Paris. Right. So just take a look at your console. Make sure what you type in, you see results. So this is going to confirm that the search bar does work and the search controller protocol method does get, does get called. Again, it gets called every time you type in. So I type in Alex, type in Swift, right? Type in Swift, delete Swift. I have F, put T. Let me remove the simulator. How come it keeps the first letter or the last letter? The first letter, like I have S right now? Yeah. That's no longer in the search bar, but it just keeps it there because that's the first character you typed in. Okay, cool. Is everybody up to where we are now or oh, anybody needs help? Feel free to please jump in because we we want to have that app working nicely. We don't want to miss anybody along the way. Questions? Okay, cool. So let us get into the world of combine before we continue even further. So at the very top of your, of your, of your class, we have import UI kit, which is all our UI code. Let's go ahead and import combine asynchronous let's put asynchronous programming framework introduced iOS 13 okay so Combine is an asynchronous programming framework introduced in iOS 13 Combine does a lot there's a lot of Places in your application you could refactor and use combine. The one place or two places we'll use combine today is one to do our API client and two to listen to the text field or the text bar on our search controller. So as the user is typing in, we'll use combine to convert our property search text to a publisher so we could hear changes as the user is typing. And we could use operators, combine works with operators. So we could use operators on that search text to do even some more modifications for us along the way. So combine is very powerful, very flexible, does a lot. Um, so the objective is to use combine to take two parts of our code to um, more optimized levels. One is the API client and two is the search text, which will actually create the search text now. And combine is better seen in practice. So let's actually code that out. So combine here, we have our declare search controller. We will declare a search text property that will be a publisher. That listens for changes from the search bar. Search controller. Okay. Okay, cool, that's what it is. We'll say private bar search text. In order to make this search text a publisher in Combine, you have to append the at published property wrapper to it. So in order 
to make any property of publisher to append the um. On the first line, is it supposed to be there will be a publisher that listens? Oh, well, my first line, declare a search text property that will be that a will publisher. Uh -huh. uh huh. I thought the publisher was the thing that sent the message that you're supposed to listen. Yep. I might have not have the, okay. Yep, yep. You're gonna see how that looks later. We're just setting it up right now. For it to actually be a publisher, we have to add a, uh, a dollar sign to it. No, but I'm saying like how how is the the search text going to be the publisher if it's listening? The publisher listens or it sends the message. The publisher sends values or emits values. So how why is it listening? Okay, maybe I'll see you later down. It's fine. Uh, instead of listens, I could put if that makes more sense. Declare search text property that will be a publisher that emits changes. Let me do that. Emits changes from the search bar on the search controller. Does that read better for you? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, so here, so the, okay, where are we? In order to make any property a publisher, you need to append the published property. Okay, so here we need to add add published. Here, like that. So now this search text could be a publisher. When we append the, we have to suffix, oh, sorry, we have to prefix a dollar sign to it. Actually, let me, in order for, to use, to use the search text. Is actually to to use this to subscribe to subscribe to search texts publisher a dollar sign needs to to search text. So it's going to be like this. So when I say search text prefix by a dollar sign, then I could subscribe to the values from that search text. Okay. This is the first time you're seeing this. Feel f that's okay. Um, there's a challenge that I'll get to some more practice into doing this again. So again, I'm just introducing this very incrementally here. Um, what we want to do, we'll have a search text. So as I'm adding bodies to it, think of it like your, um, your property observer where you have a did set. This is a bit similar, but did set only gives you values. On the publisher, you could add more operators to the publisher, like the debounce, for example, which is going to be what we'll be adding to this. Other than that, you could simply use your property observer, a did set to just listen for changes. Everybody with me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And if we forgot what that looks like, what I'm talking about is if I have a variable search text like that, I could have I could have a did set here where there's changes coming in here. That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying property observer. Property observer. Let's keep this here as notes. All right, cool. So now we set up, we set all that up. Let us in our viewed load go ahead and actually subscribe to our search text publisher. What does that look like? Here I'll say subscribe to the search text. We'll start off with the dollar sign. We'll say search text. 
now we could listen for values on it by saying sync. Sorry. Again, we could listen for values on it by using the sync operator here. And we're only listening for values, so use the first initializer here. It doesn't have any error. So say sync receive value, first initializer, press enter. It expects a string because it knows anything that changes, that property is a string. So here we'll just say text for now. And in the closure, I'll print text. Like that. Okay. One other thing we have to do, we have to store we have to store, this returns what's known as a cancelable. This returns what's known as a cancelable, and we need to store that cancelable in our view controller, so that way it doesn't ex escape scope. Because if we don't keep a hold of it, and it escapes scope, we're not gonna get, we'll no longer be subscribed to that publisher. So we need to keep a hold of it. The way we keep a hold of it in combine, here is using using a property here as a store subscriptions i'll use a variable called subscriptions which is a set of any cancelable it's empty right now and this any cancelable, as I said before, it's a way that you could hold on to subscriptions in combined. If you subscribe to something, there's a subscription. If you don't hold on to it, you're not gonna get values as the publisher is actually not even gonna get values at all because the publisher will never emit values. The publisher emits values when you subscribe to that publisher. Okay. All right, so here we are. We have our search text. We're listening for values or we subscribe to it using the sync operator. We print values in it, and now we will store the subscription like that. At this point, build, make sure you have no errors, no warnings. So just to go over what we just did, we have our search text, which we haven't set up yet as far as like in the um, protocol method. We subscribe to it using the sync operator. There's a next operator called assign, which we won't see today. But the sync operator receives values from the publisher. The only value this publisher emits here is this text or a string value, and we have access to it in the closure. So simply, we'll just print it out. We're just testing right now. We we'll print out that value, and that's what we have. So to make sure this works as intended, let's go to the protocol method at the very bottom of this class and remove, I think we have a print statement here. Remove the print statement. And what we'll do here, we'll use a guard statement. We'll say let text equal to search controller dot search bar dot text, which is an optional. We'll unwrap it. We'll also make sure it's not empty by saying, make sure the text is not empty. If it is, we'll just return. If we do have the text, which is not empty on line 127, then we assign it to the search text. So upon assigning this to the search text, upon assigning a new value, to the search text subscriber in the okay so anytime the user types in here it's gonna get assigned to the search text the search that text safe space what's that this is the safe Say that again. This is a safe space. You cussing. What did they say? Upon asking a new value of As <laughs> uh, Tiffany. Um, okay. Upon, oh, sorry. Uh, upon a sign. What did I say? Upon a sign in. Oh, here. Got a sign. Okay, upon assigning a new value to the search text, Tiffany. 
the subscriber in the video load will receive that value. Everybody's with me here so far? Yep. Okay, cool. So search text here, let's go up and so make sure there's no print statement here. The only print statement should be coming from the subscriber. Everybody with me? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and run the app. And get our search bar type in here like we did before. And again, this print statement here is coming from line 56. Because now our publisher and subscriber works as intended. I'm able to subscribe to the publisher, the search text publisher, using that dollar sign. And the dot sync is the subscribing operator. And in that closure, I'm getting the value that got emitted from the publisher. Again, combine, it, it's a bit getting used to, but doing the challenge and just like doing this particular lesson will get us better adapt here. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is good. So the Alex, next thing can I, you go to, can you go to the subscriptions variable? Uh, where am I? Uh, here. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Okay, the next reason or the big reason why we have this subscription now is now we could add combined operators on it. One of those combined operators we could add on this subscription here, or before we subscribe to it, is this debounce operator. The debounce operator, we could say, hey, allow the user, after the user finish types, then go ahead and subscribe, subscribe to that value. What does that look like? Right before our sync, we'll say debounce, right? Type in debounce, bounce. We'll say wait for dot seconds. So type in dot seconds here. We'll say wait for a second. We could decrease that number. Wait for about a second. And it expects a scheduler as well. In that scheduler, think of it like dispatch main. In that case, we'll be using the run loop. The run loop is the, the thread that the application runs on, the main run loop. So we'll say run loop here, that main. So wait for about a second before going ahead and printing or subscribing to the file. So, and then let's first do that and then we'll see what that looks like. So run the app and let's see how it works. So I'm gonna type in you see already it's not typing A L E X. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Try it again. Right. If I type in Chelsea, it's not gonna type in it's not gonna show C, then H or C H, then C H E, C H E L, C H E L S, C H E L. After I finish typing, it's gonna wait for that second and then make the query. Are we able to test that? What's the purpose of it? So it doesn't so search for so every letter? Exactly, from the Pixabay API. Okay. Okay. Um, other than that, you don't really need the balance. Like if you don't care about network requests, you don't need that. The user could just make queries, but this is a good use case for if you don't want to have too many network calls, which most times you don't want to have too many network calls. Cool. Were we all able to test it? Yep. Okay. One other thing we could do, we could add a next operator called remove duplicates. So just type in remove duplicates after the bounce. Actually, before I did that, let me just test this first. So don't type in remove duplicates yet. Let's just go run the code. And I'm gonna type in Alex. I'll remove the X, I'll put in X again. You see, there's Alex again. Do we all see that? Yeah. Okay, so if I don't want that to happen, I could say remove duplicates here and run the app again. And let's see what happens now. So if I put in Alex, I remove X, I don't see Alex again, right? Type in Alex here, I'm moving the EX, right? So it removes the duplicates. It doesn't allow the user to have duplicates, again, sending to the network. 
So those are the useful parts of combined. Again, you'll see that better in practice as you work more with combined. Okay, so this is all we have here for the search text right now. Um, and where we have the print text, this is actually gonna be calling the API, calling the API for the photo search. Okay, any questions before we continue? Uh, this is not a question, but um, there is a info session at 12 o'clock. Uh, is the lesson going to go over 12 o'clock today? Good question. Um, no, it should not. We should be done in 20 minutes. Okay. Cool? We need to break. <laughs> if we break, then we're not going to finish today. No, yeah. Breakfast break. 20 minutes and we'll be done. Is that okay? We just have to write the API client, basically. Write the API client, and I think we should be close to finishing this. Okay? But we'll be done before 12. Cassandra? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's continue on. Let's build our API client here. So go to create a new file. Call it API client. And our API client looks like this. We have API client. And we'll create one more file. New file. We'll call this config. In our config, we'll have a struct called config. With that said, feel free to follow along. I'll post the video and I'll post the, the completed project. But um, since we wanna finish before 12, let's just finish the app. And then if there's questions, feel free to catch up later with me. Is that okay? Sounds good. Okay, so we have our config here. We have our static let, we'll call this API key. And here, this is where your API key goes. Okay. So we all have our Pixabay API key. We'll put it in here. So the API key goes here. Next, we'll go back to our API client and let's go ahead and write a function. This is a public function. We'll call this public function search photos and search photos for query. And query is a string. Okay. We have an endpoint which let me get the endpoint. We all have access to the endpoint from Pixabay, let me get access to my endpoint uh, here. This is what my endpoint looks like, API key, very good. Okay, I'll slack this out. It doesn't have the API key exposed. Good, uh, where is the channel? 63 here, oh, 63, sorry. Feel free to grab that. Um, URL string or that HTTP string and per page we'll fix that right now per page I'll put 200 here build okay no more errors good perfect if you follow the same format you should have no errors up to this point so per page is how many photos per page the maximum is 200 I think max is 200 And safe search, true, All right? This is a family show. Um, and let's continue on. So we have our endpoint. We have all that stuff ready to go. Great. Let's create a URL. And our URL will construct a URL with a string. In that case, it's the endpoint. 
I just go ahead and put an exclamation mark here just because I know this works or we could maybe say factory, just make that safer. Let's not do that. Um, guard here. Else. Turn. Actually, to keep this simpler, let's just make sure we bang this here for now. Not best practice, but that's okay for now. Um, okay, so we have our endpoint. We have all that good to go. We have our URL. Let's continue on. If the user puts in a query, we have the query. One thing we need to do for the query is make sure that if the user adds in a space, that we take care of that space. So we'll say query that add in percent encoding. We'll say URL most allowed. And this we could just use nil coalescing to add some default value. What does this do? If I put in, if the user puts in a search that looks like like this, like um, fish tacos, it will fail because spaces are not allowed in URLs. So what add in percent encoding does, it will add in the percentage 20 like this. Okay, this is what that does. Great, so we have our URL. Now let's go ahead and use URL session to make the request. So URL session dot shared. Here we'll be using combine for networking. So we'll say URL session that shared the combined operator that is the publisher on URL session is called data task publisher. So scroll down to data task publisher that expects a URL. There's also one that expects a URL request, but here we have a URL. We're just passing the URL that we have here. This URL is coming from this URL here. Okay. Great. Now we have our publisher. We'll go ahead and map. The only value we're interested in here is the data. The only value we're interested in here is the data from the response. So here we'll use key paths and we'll say that data. So this slash here is a key path. It just says, hey, get me access to some sort of property that I'm getting back. In our case, we're getting back data. Data is what we want. Data is what we'll use to convert our data to the photo type, for example. So here we have data. Next, we need to decode. Actually, we don't have that function yet. Go ahead and go to the lesson since we short on time here go to go to the lesson and go to let me navigate to the lesson navigate to the lesson and go beneath the style of files grab the photo here where it says photo.swift just grab those two structs and for now we'll keep it in the same file like that we could create a new file for it but we'll keep it in the same file so copy the code keep it in the same file that's fine so now we have the top level for our JSON is the photo results wrapper in our Postman. So the photo results wrapper is the top level. So if we go back to our URL session publisher here, we'll use the decode operator. Decode. Decode takes a type. We know we're familiar with decode here. The type it expects is photo results wrapper itself and the decoder will say JSON decoder initializer here okay so we map we only expect data we only want the data we take the data we convert it to our folder results wrapper struct and we'll use map again because now we're interested in only the photos right the results wrapper represents this struct we're interested in the hits. The hits are the photo array, or is the photo array. So here we'll use shorthand syntax for closures. We'll say, get me the hits. 
I'm only interested in the hits. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and say receive. Receive is a next operator on combine. That says receive on, sorry, receive on. Receive on tells me what thread do I want to receive the values on? Do I want to receive it on the background thread? Do I want to receive it on the main thread? In our case, we want to receive this on the main thread. So we'll say dispatch main of this dispatch queue.main. So receive it on the main thread on the And lastly, we'll say, go ahead and erase to publisher. Dot erase to publisher here. And erase to publisher, what does it do? It now doesn't expose all the inner workings of our publisher. It will only allow us now to return, oh, let me scroll down there. It will only now allow us to return a publisher on any publisher. Do we have combined without combined? I'm sorry, one second. Scroll up and add combine here. Import combine. And here we're returning an any publisher of type. This returns a publisher of type photos array, because that's what we want, or an error. And lastly, just return this whole block of code like that. All right, so this is what we have. Um, top down, we have our search photos function. It takes in a query from the view controller, the user's search bar. Um, we say get us the maximum pages, which is 200. We have our query being um, URL, URL um, proof, right? Because if we have, not URL, yeah, URL proof, if we have a space, go ahead and add a percent 20 to it. Our endpoint, this is our Pixabay API endpoint. We get in the API key from our config file, which we'll be adding to the getignore. Make sure you add this file to the getignore. The query is from the, the user per page. Safe search is true. We have our URL. We go ahead, we use URL session that's shared, which is a singleton. We use the publisher on combine on URL session called data task publisher. It expects a URL. We map, we only are interested in the data from the data task. We decode our top level type using JSON decoder. We only interested in the array of photos, which is the hits property here. We want to get this back in the view controller on the main thread, so we don't have to do any more dispatching in the view controller. And lastly, we re erase the publisher, so we're not exposing the inner workings of our combined network. Did everybody get the code here? Yeah. OK, cool. So now let's go to the view controller. I don't think we come back to the API client here. Back in the view controller, we need to call our API client. Let's write a function. We're still good on time within the next 10 minutes. We'll call, we'll say search photos. Search photos also takes a query here. String. And we need an API client. Actually, for now, I'll just say API client here. Dot search photos for the query. Okay, so now we have a publisher here as well, right? Because this now is a publisher. So search photos so publisher. So we could subscribe to that publisher using the sync operator like we did before. So we could say sync. This time we have a completion because there could be an error. Completion, we'll just print out the completion here. We're more interested in the value. You see now we have an array of photos. So here I'll say photos. 
just to test this, I'll say dump the photos. And also we need to store this subscription like we did earlier into our subscription set like that, build. So now if we call search photos in our view controller, actually not the view controller, let's call search photos right here. So I could call search photos instead of this print statement, search photos, self dot search photos and pass in text. And here I'll break any routine cycles. So right. say, we're choosing yep. for a reusable one, the cancel, cancelable, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, very good. So here, when the user types in, it's going to call our search photos. It calls the API client on search photos. It passes the query. We subscribe to that publisher. We dump the photos just to show we actually got data back. So actually, let's run that and test it. Uh, crash. You see why you don't use this? This is bad. All right. Is that sorry? I had a question. Did we give it a um, query yet? Where did we give it a, the query? Um, I gave it the query. This query here. Yeah, when we actually use the function, where did we? Oh, 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 oh! Here, here, here! In the sync, instead of having the print text we had before. Instead of the. In, on the search text, right in the closure for the sync here, we just but, call search and we pass in the text. You got that? Okay, give me a second. Let me stop sharing so I could set up my API key. Uh, API key, where are you? API key. API key. So we all, sh we all should do that now, right? Yes. The beauty thing is you're not sharing, so you are good to go. You still you think we're gonna steal your API key, Alex? <laughs> no. Why would I think that? <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So now I run my app, no problem, because I have an API key. I get results, right? So this all works. We got results, and with six minutes, let's see if we could populate our photos. Because now we get results from the dump. I'm sorry? All right. Oh, yours, not... yours is working already? No, no. I'm, I don't even know why I'm not on mute. I was just excited. <laughs> okay. One more function, I think. And I think we're getting closer. So write a function here um, called update snapshot. And this snapshot takes photos. So update snapshot with photos, which is an array of photo. And what does that do? Well, we want to get access to our snapshot from our data source. And we also want to apply the snapshot to the data source. So snapshot, animating, yes. and let's go ahead and set that up. So we'll say snapshot. I want to delete everything from the snapshot. No, delete all items. Okay, delete all items, then snapshot dot append back my section and snapshot dot append items. Oh, we didn't change that yet. That should be an array of photos. That's going to give us an error. That's fine. We'll fix that. And in our dump, instead of calling dump here, we'll just call self.update snapshot and we'll pass in the photos. Again, let's break any retain cycles here. Build. And the last error we have to fix is this photos because our default data source expects integers, but we have photos, right? So again, I'll post the end result of the project, but for use of time, because some fellows have to leave, let us 
go fix the diffable data source item type. The item type right now is an int. This is not what we want. We want a photo. Did I make photo hashable already? Yes, I did. Look at that. Um, remember, both those types need to be hashable. Our photo is already hashable, so this is good to go. And the next place we need to update this is in our diffable, NS diffable data sources down here. Uh, where is it? Oh, here we don't need this. We're not appending anymore. So remove the um, line where it says append items array of integers. We no longer have integers. Just to be clear about what was going on there, uh, that array for that range was just some dummy data to populate the collection view? Yes, that was just dummy data integers because our item type was integers. So this right. would work. For, but now this is not going to photo. Okay. Exa exactly. But now this is not going to work because it's expecting an array of photos. Cool. OK. I was making sure I understood the error we were seeing. No, that's good. That's good. Very good. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, OK, so now build. We have no more errors. Run the app. Let's see where we are. No photos yet, because we're still missing. Ay, ay, ay. There's always one more thing. Um, let me slack that out. That's probably going to be faster. We need Kingfisher or something to process our photos for us. Kingfisher. Go to Kingfisher. I'll actually slack out the link. Make this faster. So I slacked out Kingfisher URL. So copy the URL, go to Xcode, go to the top where it says File, go down to Swift Packages, Add Package Dependency. Again, Xcode, File, go down to Swift Packages, Add Package Dependency. Paste in the URL from Kingfisher. Click Next. It's going to verify the URL. It's going to find the version for the dependency. I'll click Next. It's going to resolve Kingfisher, find it, fetch it, clone it. We have a bunch of libraries we could use. We'll use the first library that says Kingfisher, not Kingfisher for SwiftUI or Dynamic. First option, Kingfisher, finish. And just like that, we now have Kingfisher in our project. We could go to our view controller, go to the very top, import Kingfisher, import Kingfisher, and now we could use Kingfisher in our cell for row, or not, sorry, not cell for row, in our data, in our data source, in our data source set of our cell right here. I'm sorry, what, what package uh, did you import? Was it just Kingfisher? Just yeah, plain? yeah, yeah, the first one, the first option. Okay, just the first one, right? Yep, 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 just the first one. Thank you. Very good. And now we have our cell here. So our cell has an image view. So we say cell.imageView.kf for Kingfisher dot set image. Set image with resource. The resource is a URL it's expecting. I will say URL with string. I will pass in my photo, which is called int right now. So let's change that. In the closure where it says int, change int to photo. And now we'll just say photo dot web format URL like that. Build, make sure you have no errors. Again, our type is a photo. On our photo, we have a web URL. And we should now be better somewhere. Hey, look at that. We got photos. OK. So we did do it in 10 minutes. So we could add the next five minutes. Sorry, Cassandra. Um, I could search for something else. I could search for tacos and tacos come up, right? So again, you see it's, it's waiting until I finish typing to search. That's the debounce feature, right? So I could scroll down and see all my tacos, keep getting hungry. Hopefully I have tacos for lunch. And this is the app, right? I will post the finished code on the GitHub repo like we always do. But this is basically the end of the application. Any questions? We have a couple more minutes. Miss, maybe one thing. OK, so instead of the dump. Instead of the dump in the subscription on the search here, is that where we are? 
um let me see i have a subscription where actually the, not here in, i think we had the dump we had the dump maybe here right yeah and instead we have that um update snapshot we have the print completion and then okay so sorry it was, no, and self okay the update snapshot with photos if anybody needs to drop out, you could feel actually wait before you drop out. Let me just double check something first before you drop out. Okay, feel free to drop out if you have to drop out, but we'll just spend two more minutes to answer any questions we have. Any other questions? Ooh. You got your search working? You got the photos? When it's looking long like this, like a thousand, I don't know how. You could change it. You could change it if you want. Um, and also the content mode, we could change the content mode. We could change a lot of things. You right? To maybe like ask, like, yeah, you're right. Yep, yep. Very oh, but cool. would you do that on the regular cell? You would just do that in the cell itself. Yeah, you could do that in the cell itself. You could do it right in the, where is it here? On the image view, you could just say so that image view that content content mode equal to aspect fill if you want. And then you could add more things to it as well. But I would probably work on the extra credit. Not the extra credit. I'll probably work on the um, the challenge at this point. Cool. Hey, look at this guy. Yeah, it looks way better in aspect fill. Yeah, very good. Very good. No, this is dope. Anyway, so um, what is the extra? Do you click on the picture and the picture takes you? Um, yeah, you could do that, but I'll probably go to the lesson at this point. You could definitely add extra to it if you want. Like you click on the picture, maybe you could zoom the picture, stuff like that. But I'll probably work on the challenge just to um, work more on your skill set as far as like compositional layout and combine. So the challenge is use this endpoint here, okay. um, which gets like friends episodes. Um, you could get all the episodes of different shows if you want, up to you. Or you could have a search bar as well, it's up to you. Oh, but, so basically um, you look like Netflix. Like you'll have like the different seasons and you can go through yep. like the orthogonal scroll. Yep, yep, exactly, exactly. So everything we've done so far implemented with a different endpoint using Combine. Gotcha. Cool? Yeah. Very good. Okay. This is a wrap. Thank you all.